Spain has uh, stepped up and offered to take in a rescue ship carrying more than 600 migrants this after the refusal by Italy and Malta. It's unclear, though, whether the Aquarius, which currently lies more than 1,400 kilometers from Valencia, and has said it has received no instructions yet to head to Spain can make it. It says it only has 24 hours worth of food. Contrast the reaction in Spain, where it's largely supportive, especially on the left of Pedro Sanchez, and in Italy, where the new interior minister and far-right leader Matteo Salvini is crowing over the decision to refuse those migrants. After a political standoff between Italy and Malta left 629 migrants stranded on a rescue ship drifting at sea, Spain has stepped in to save those on board. Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez has given the Aquarius permission to dock in the Spanish city of Valencia. The migrants were rescued from traffickers' unsafe boats in international waters north of Libya. Many of them were picked up by the Italian Navy and Coast Guard and then transferred to the Aquarius. Aquarius actually arrived. Uh, just in time uh, because the, the two boats were deflating. Uh, uh, on one of them, a lot of people ended up in the water. Uh, the team was able to stabilize the situation. Uh, but it's always very difficult for the team. Uh, our capacity usually is about 500. Uh, we're now at 629, so we're over capacity, uh, which adds a more, uh, more burden to uh, both the, the search and rescue team uh, and also to the medical team who have to constantly be, be checking up on people. Meanwhile, Italy's new interior minister, Matteo Salvini, defended his decision to block the ship, saying Italy has been transformed into the refugee camp of Europe. Deputy Prime Minister Luigi Di Maio echoed the sentiment, saying the crisis is a demonstration of EU states' refusal to share the burden of migrant arrivals. The moment to say enough has arrived. We're doing this with all the necessary humanity and sensitivity. We immediately send boats with doctors to tend to the Aquarius. And now we're waiting for answers at the European level. Salvini has also warned another charity ship, the Sea Watch 3, that it too may be prevented from docking in Italy if it rescues migrants at sea. For more, let's go to Brussels. Correspondent Dave Keating, there you hear it, uh, Luigi Di Maio, one of the heads of that coalition, that populist coalition government, uh, saying he's uh, waiting for answers at the European level, Italy picking a fight with Malta, but also with Brussels. Yeah, I mean, it, Matteo Salvini was claiming victory after Spain decided to take the boat into its harbors, which may seem strange, except what Italy is trying to prove here is that the system doesn't work. And that was kind of proven today when the European Commission couldn't really come out with a response to this in terms of who legally had to take the boat in. The commission said that it was a humanitarian imperative that somebody take the boat, but when asked well, who legally has to take this boat said that wasn't clear. And it's not exactly clear because the migrants were taken off the Libyan coast. The boat is currently right now somewhere between Maltese and, Sic and Sicily, uh, Malta and Sicily. Uh, but the water situation is still unclear. And the port of Valencia in Spain, which has agreed to take the boat, is nowhere near that spot where the boat is at the moment. So right now it's unclear whether the boat can go to Spain. Uh, but what this has been is maybe the first big showdown between the new Italian populist government and the European Union. And interestingly, the new government in Spain, led by Pedro Sanchez, has come into office at around the same time as this new Italian government. So we have kind of a, a good cop, bad cop thing going on here, or at least one government which is uh, kind of making nicer with Brussels than the other. But the key point that Matteo Salvini wanted to stress today was that this isn't a long-term solution. Quote, relying on Spain's good heart is not a long-term plan for how to deal with these situations. So they want real reform, something that goes beyond the resettlement scheme that was agreed in 2015, which Italy says is not adequately spreading the burden of migrants, which right now they say is falling chiefly on Italy's shores. And they have a strong case. Uh, Dave Keating, uh, what are uh, plans, if any, in the works to share the burden better. It seems like we're still having the same discussion we were having back in 2015. 
Yeah, exactly. This is a debate that really has gone nowhere. Uh, it, I think few people would say that that resettlement scheme is working well. Certainly plenty of countries in Eastern Europe, notably Hungary, are refusing to take any resettled migrants or at least anything in any significant number. Um, even Western European countries have not been very quick to actually take in uh, migrants. And this was a big issue in the Italian election campaign. Europe didn't feature that heavily in that campaign, but this issue of migration did. And that was really where the EU featured the most, was this lack of solidarity, Italy being left to deal with these migrants all on its own, even though they, were, they are the external borders effectively for countries like Germany, for countries like France. So there was this feeling that it's not fair. And so I imagine that De Maio and uh, Salvini really sticking to their guns on this is going to play well with the Italian people because we saw it play well in the election. The question is if something went really wrong with either this boat or another boat, if they still refuse it entry. I mean, if, if we had some kind of absolutely horrific humanitarian crisis because Italy refused to take in a boat, would the Italian populace turn against the government? Would they say, okay, now you've gone too far? Unfortunately, we may only learn that when such a thing happens. Dave Keating reporting from Brussels. Many thanks for that update.